right now. Really? Um, well, you know... Uh, Hall of Fame coach Bud Grant, who led the Minnesota Vikings to four Super Bowls in eight years with his feared Purple People Eaters defense, but lost every one of them, passed away on Saturday. He was 95. Before watching more video, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Through social media, the Vikings broke the news of Grant's passing. Bud Grant was the most iconic figure in the history of the Minnesota Vikings. In a joint statement released by the organization, owners Zigi Wilf and Mark Wilf called Bud a one-in-a-lifetime man who will be forever associated with success, toughness, the North, and the Vikings. To put it briefly, he was the Vikings. Grant's hard, unwavering stare from the sidelines in his signature purple Vikings cap became instantly recognizable and immediately endeared him to his teams. In his day, he was a stalwart among coaches like Don Shula, Tom Landry, Chuck Knoll, John Madden, and Hank Stram. But Grant wasn't particularly motivated by recognition. The only reason I can envision for a head coach getting credit for anything good is because he gets so much blame when something is poor. Grant once said, I believe that the key is to remain unaffected by events, positive or negative. In 18 seasons as head coach for the Vikings, 1967 to 1985, with a year off in 1984, he led the team to a 158 to 96 5 record and 11 division titles. In the postseason, he had a 10-12 record. Grant ranked sixth on the list of all-time NFL victories when he called it quits. A long list of words, including legendary, determined, and successful, can be used to define Coach Bud Grant. Underneath his austere attitude, which some mistook for harshness, lied the warm heart of a man who sincerely loved his players and the sport of football. Pro Football Hall of Fame President Jim Porter said, Grant, who had previously replaced Norm Van Brocklin, another future Hall of Famer, put together the legendary Purple People Eaters defensive line. The line, whose slogan was meet at the quarterback and a potent offense led Minnesota to the Super Bowl in 1970, the last year of the event before the AFL-NFL merger. The strongly favored Vikings lost 23-7 to the underdog Chiefs setting the tone for subsequent title game defeats to teams from the lesser conference in the years following the 1973, 1974, and 1976 seasons. According to Grant, survive may be a better word for success if you want to make it into the Pro Football Hall of Fame, as he stated during his statement at the 1994 induction ceremony in Canton, Ohio. You have to be able to deal with defeat. When you lose, you feel like you're dying but you have to get over it. Grant was the first individual to be inducted into the CFL Hall of Fame and the NFL Hall of Fame, and he was also a successful coach in the CFL. He spent much of his off-seasons fishing in Alaska and hunting in Arizona. During his decade-long stay in Canada, he won four league championships. Upon his birth on May 20, 1927, in Superior, Wisconsin, Harry Peter Grant Jr. was given the name Bud by his mother. He had polio as a kid, but he beat it and went on to star in three sports at his high school. After joining in 1945, he played on a squad coached by Paul Brown, a future NFL Hall of Fame coach, executive, and owner at the Great Lakes Naval Station near Chicago. Grant then went on to the University of Minnesota, where he earned nine varsity letters while playing three sports and was ultimately drafted by the National Basketball Association and the National Football League. Then he went into basketball, where he spent two seasons with the Minneapolis Lakers and won a championship in 1950. Grant's true talent, though, was on the football field, specifically with the Philadelphia Eagles. After finishing second in the NFL in receptions, 56, and receiving yards, 997, in 1952, he was sent to Winnipeg of the Canadian Football League due to a contract disagreement. As a two-way standout for the Blue Bombers, he was promoted to coach, where he led the team to six Grey Cup appearances and four championships in 1958, 1959, 1961, and 1962. Grant was a successful coach in the Canadian Football League with 102 victories.
The Vikings took notice and enticed him back across the border in 1967. Grant led the Vikings to 10 Central Division titles in 11 seasons. His roster included future Hall of Famers Fran Tarkenton, Carl Eller, Alan Page, Paul Krauss, and Ron Yeri. Amy Klobuchar, a U.S. Senator from Minnesota, was named after her late father, Jim Klobuchar, a newspaper reporter who covered those Vikings teams. In a statement issued by her office, she noted that, as a child, no name loomed greater than Grant's. When she was a kid, Klobuchar remembered answering the phone to stillness on the other side, save for maybe the mumbled word Jim. She added, no matter the score, it meant it was Bud phoning my dad back for the post-game narrative. Grant was so strict and insisted on total concentration from his team that they even practiced standing at attention for the national anthem. He notably forbade the use of sideline heaters at Metropolitan Stadium and moved the Vikings outside to train during the cold winter months. Grant was an honorary captain for the Vikings on January 10, 2016, when they played Seattle in the first round of the playoffs at the university's outdoor stadium while their facility was being constructed. Wearing a purple short-sleeved polo shirt and a Vikings cap, he walked out for the pregame coin toss as though he were dressed for a round of golf despite the negative 6 degrees Fahrenheit temperature and minus 25 wind chill. During the 1983 season, Grant stepped down and was replaced by Les Steckel, whose fiery style was the antithesis of Grant's measured approach. Steckel's record was 3-13. After one season in which the team finished 7-9, Grant was replaced by longtime offensive coordinator Jerry Burns. Even after Grant had retired from coaching, he continued to have an impact on his former squad and on the community. Grant stayed in the same Bloomington, Indiana, suburb home he had purchased in 1967, which was less than 10 miles from Metropolitan Stadium, when the time came to push for a new stadium to replace the Metrodome, where the Vikings played from 1982 to 2013. He became something of a community spokesman for the team. As often as he could, he would go on fishing and hunting vacations with his loved ones. In 2015, while on a hunting trip to Canada, Grant's pilot had a particularly hairy experience when the landing gear and dashboard instruments failed, forcing him to safely belly flop the plane. Grant's softer side was also on display. In 2009, when the University of Minnesota Gophers played their first home football game in TCF Bank Stadium, he was chosen an honorary captain along with eight other former players. During the pregame ceremony, as fans sang his name, he appeared visibly moved. Grant was also well known for his garage sales, where he offered free autographs to anyone who spent at least $25 on goods like sports memorabilia and pre-owned camping gear from his playing and coaching days. At the 2017 convention, which ran for three days, fans could buy bobbleheads created in his likeness. Grant would sign autographs for a never-ending stream of fans, some of whom would travel from other countries just to see the old coach's collection. He was given a sizable office in the Viking suburban offices, and his name was kept in the team's directory as a consultant. Grant was always one of the first people the Vikings introduced to a new coach or executive. When I first walked into this building, Bud was one of the first people to greet me with a smile. Current Vikings head coach Kevin O'Connell, I didn't anticipate at the time that I would be so privileged to create a close bond with him over the next year. Bud was very accommodating, and we met once a week at his office to talk about football and other topics. I will always be grateful for those talks. They helped me develop into a better coach, spouse, and parent. On his 95th birthday, May 20th, 2022, his old players and current teammates got together for a Zoom call. James Marshall started the online rendition of Happy Birthday that everyone joined in on. His spouse Pat Smith, six kids, 19 grandkids, and 13 great-grandkids as of 2021 are all here to remember him. His 59-year-old bride Pat passed away in 2009. Mike Grant, one of the sons, established a dominating football program at Eden Prairie High School only 15 minutes from the Grant's home, where his team won 11 state titles over a 22-year period, from 1996 to 2017.